displayed out is there are these really long transfer beams that run the full length of the house underneath the roof, and they're also under us. They're carrying the weight downstairs. And then there are cross beams that carry weight from the roof to these transfer beams. And the transfer beams um, are resting on piers in the house. There's one at either side of the living room, dining room, and then there's a big fireplace that's in the middle of the house, and the transfer beams also rest on that. And that's how the weight of this massive roof plus the third floor gets transferred down to the ground. And if he hadn't been able to afford steel, he wouldn't have been able to really build these really wide spaces inside the house uh, without having really huge timber, you know, um, wood timber members. And then his roof would have to be really high, and the whole house would have to be taller, and he'd have to have this really steeply pitched roof. And he wanted a very shallow pitch to the roof, and he wanted the house to appear as low to the ground as possible, even though it's a really big three-story house. Um, so steel allowed him not only to do some really great engineering stuff, but also to further his aesthetic needs. Um, and uh, the house is... Um, done surprisingly well considering that it hasn't been maintained all that well over the years. It's been in institutional hands since 1926 when the last family lived here. Um, and when they were uncovering, when they were taking off the roof during the exterior restoration to uh, look at the steel structure and the roof structure, um, a lot of the original steel was still doing its job very well but it just needed to be beefed up somewhat to meet modern codes. We also had to add new steel in different parts of the house because now the house is no longer a home. It's now called an assembly um, occupancy and so it has to meet those loading requirements with lots more people and lots more use than a, a house would get. And I'll talk about some of that when we get inside. Um, we've finished right now most, almost all the exterior conservation and restoration of the building um, and that has included retuck pointing the entire structure replacing bricks that had cracked or whose faces had popped off over the years, um, raising the wall around the garage courtyard where you bought your tickets, the gift shop, to the proper height. It had been lowered to about only three feet high over the years, and all the extra bricks had been thrown away. So we had to make a whole bunch of new bricks for that. And when I talk about retuck pointing the house, and this exterior work cost about $4 million, by the way. And when people ask, well, where did that go? I say, well, imagine that you've got guys, union people, being paid, I don't know, $40, $50 an hour, with little electric grinders going along all of these joints and grinding out all the mortar, both in the horizontal joints as well as the vertical joints, because the mortar that was there was not the original mortar, and it was wrong for the building. Um, the mortar that had been replaced when the building was retuck pointed was actually um, more dense than the brick, and so the water and moisture that naturally gets into a building that wants to come out through the brick, um, or wants to come out, this was designed so that that moisture would come out through the mortar. And with this new kind of mortar that they put in, the moisture was starting to come out through the bricks instead. So the bricks would get saturated, and when it freezes like this, the water in the brick then can cause the brick to crack or it causes this thing called spalling where the face of the brick just pops off and you, you end up with a really horrible situation. So they had to completely retuck point for that reason as well as to restore the original look of the building. And you can see in this tuck pointing these horizontal joints are kind of cream colored and the little vertical joints are sort of close to the color of the brick. And the idea behind that is that you know right love the horizontal line, right? So the idea behind that is that you'd see from a distance more just lines going around the house. Um, if these were all white like they had been before we did this work, then your eye would stop at each one of those little horizontal lines, sort of like any of the other brick buildings around here are done. Um, so that was a huge project and part of the, a, a big part of the um, exterior cost. They also put a new roof on. Um, they put on some uh, roofing materials and roofing felts that resist water and ice damming better. They also had to pre completely remake all of the roofing tiles, which um, are originally were clay tiles, but they'd been replaced with something that was not original. And that was very difficult to match the color as well as some of the angles that are up on the roof. Um, they rebuilt these soffits underneath both ends of the house. This part is called the soffit. And this is a very kind of interesting story because this soffit, you see this color is similar to the color in the windows on the outside, some of the colors you see. 
But over the years, this had been uh, torn down and re replaced, and they didn't paint it. It was just sort of a concrete color, this gray. So once they restored the original color and rebuilt it, it made more sense that this color and that color in the window goes together. And those are the kinds of things that are being discovered as, uh, as the restoration work continues. To be as big as the beams coming yeah. out this way, do you know why that's so heavy? It seems like it's a lot bigger than it needs yeah. to be. Well, the thing is that there is this part of the structure of the building. There's um, a, a, post, a steel post inside this prow at either end that goes up to a cross beam that's connected to both of the transfer beams that run the full length of the house. And that cross beam is there because it helps carry some of the load down to the ground, but it's mostly there because these really long beams, when they come out, when they're under load, sometimes they'll twist a little bit. It's called racking. And so if you have a cross beam that's connected to those, then that will resist this tendency of the beam to twist which can cause them to fail or cause the, you know, the, the load not to be as distributed as well as it's supposed to be. So that's, that's the reason for that. And it's, yeah, that little post is still in here. It's kind of interesting that there's structure running right through this little thing that you might just think is decorative. Harry, is there, is there any other vertical steel in the building? Or did um, you, did I don't think there are too many other steel posts. There's these two, um, and in our research we didn't read about any of it. I think mostly the steel rests on brick piers that then go down to the foundation. Is that post all the way to the foundation? Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing they did on the outside is um, you can see that really dark brown line around the edge of the soffit and the roof. That's the gutter system. And uh, they had to rebuild that as well because the copper um, had, had this really beautiful, I thought, green verdigris to it, but um, in fact Wright wanted it to be this dark brown, so they stained it with acid to get this dark brown color. And it's very integral to the roof itself, so that you have to be very careful. And they, um, you can see there's a space between the soffit and the gutter. That's actually a vent to help vent um, the attic space up there so that we don't get collection of, you know, heat and all that stuff um, that you don't want up in the roof. And the water, yes? Was there ever a substitution of modern technology when you were doing the restoration? Like say, well, you know, yeah. we want to make this last a long time, so, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, you understand what I'm referring to? Oh, yeah. To? Yeah, in some cases we've done that, like in the entry hall we'll see, we won't be able to see it, but they had to put a new beam in there because the existing beam didn't meet the code anymore. And also, it was never adequate, and so the, the steel beam would deflect and crack the plaster in that ceiling all the time. So that was a place where we replaced it with some new technology. And also, I'll show you um, in the, uh, we'll, we won't see it again because it's hidden, but um, that balcony that comes out from the house on the south end, that also has a really long steel beam that it rests on, that rests on piers at either end, and then there's some cross members that are connected back to the house to support it and keep it from pulling away from the house. Well, one of those uh, cross members had not been, um, it was just resting on a steel transfer plate. It was not really connected to the house, and it had lifted about two inches up off the transfer plate, which was one reason that the balcony was failing. And so what they did was they put a counterbalance concrete beam on top of the steel beam so that it now rests solidly on the transfer beam or the transfer plate and that won't be a problem anymore. Uh, but the whole, that whole exterior balcony on the south side had to be taken apart and I think most of the steel had to be replaced because so much water had gotten in that the steel, actually the strength of the steel was degraded. 